So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by my good friend and longtime boxing historian, pundit, manager, ex-fighter, of course. So many strings to your bow. It's Spencer Fear on how you doing. Podcast host as well. Yeah, imagine. How could you leave that one out, Danny? I know. I'm, I'm already disappointed by myself. But yeah, how's everything going? How is the podcast? The fight is right with Tunde Ajayi and just generally, how's life? Yeah, everything's good, you know. Everything, everything is um, everything's really good. Uh, working on a really good project at this present moment, myself and um, Jay Spades, um, off the road program to get young young men and women off the streets and into education. So yeah, I'm doing that. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's good. And yeah, you know I mean I'm just living life, man. I'm good. I'm really good. Glad to hear it. And talking of charitable work i saw on uh instagram yesterday that there's a fundraiser an evening with amir khan for all the families affected by the tragic recent events and ongoing events in gaza um, just tell us a little bit about that because i know you're involved in it yeah um i'm i'm going to be actually interviewing amir khan um for the evening um platinum promotions uh they reached out to me um, set of a very very high net worth um, Muslim brothers who who run that, and um, they reached out to a good friend of mine, Adil, from Legal Blows, who's um, a really good solicitor lawyer, um, and they reached out to him and said, "Oh, could you get hold of Spence?" And they got hold of me, um, and they said they we're, we're doing this fundraiser to to help out um, the families that have been. You know what I mean that that's been involved in in the bombings that's been out there and all the rest. It's something that that is close to my heart. Um, not a lot of people will like they believe that they're picking a side. You're not picking a side. We're picking a side of humanity and to help people. So fair play to Amir Khan who been under scrutiny for for certain things. Um, and of this, how can you scrutinize anybody that's doing that? There's there's quite a few people um that have come out you know to speak against these things so i think it's just just right i'm pretty i'm gonna be real with you i'm pretty disappointed with our government to tell you the honest truth. i don't want to turn this into a political spiel or all the rest of it right but i am pretty disappointed with our government i think they had a, um uh, they had a, a vote for the ceasefire right a calling for the ceasefire and I think it was 290, 293 MPs voted for the bombings uh, to continue. They voted so, for a humanitarian pause rather than a ceasefire, basically. It's a disgust. No, it's disgusting. It's it's no that I'm I'm disturbed by that. So I have to big up Labour MP uh, um, Dawn Butler. Um, for like, well, boy, I I voted, but I was I was voting for for the ceasefire. Sure. Like people were not calling. How can you? I don't get that. Do you know what I mean now? Check. No matter what side's right or what side is wrong. If we're saying, oh, then well, well, let's have like um, uh, uh, a ceasefire to end the the shootings and the bombings and the killings on both sides, but a ceasefire mainly pointed at the Israelis. And this country voted not to. That's mad. That's like somebody being attacked. And we're saying, well, let's stop you being attacked. Oh, no, I don't know about that one. And you have a vote on that kind of thing. Should it just be, should it be common sense? But as Larry Ekendayo, former prize fighter winner, his mother always used to say that common sense isn't that common, but it is what it is. But yeah, if you haven't, um, uh, it's uh, Platinum Promotions. And their uh, yeah, platinum promotions. You can on Instagram. You can buy your ticket. You can come along. It's at the Queen Mary um, University on the sixteenth of December, and it's something I'm yeah, I'm really I'm looking forward to that, especially because I like to stick it on MA Khan from time to time. So yeah, you know I mean it's it's all good. But no, massive props to MA Khan, and I'm telling you. He has become a shining example to other Muslims who have kept stum when this is going on, 
right? They say, oh, I, I can't. Come on, man. Right's right is right is wrong. And and you know, right's right and wrong is wrong. And and that's where I'm on it. I don't want to get too deep into it right now and 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 piss off like people. I just want to listen about boxing right now. That's what I want to listen to. You don't care about pissing people off. Come on. No, it's political fixing. stuff. Nah, bro. I'm just keeping it. No, I'm very fixing. Do you know that? But I'm just keeping this thing 100. You know what I mean? Um, I'm seeing innocent people die, man. It's breaking me up, man. I'm not going to be real. Little yeah. kids being bombed. Come on, man. I think a lot of people watching this will sympathise with that um, feeling. And hopefully some will come along to the event. We'll put a, a link in the description as well. Thank so you very much, Dan. Fingers Thank crossed. You, you get a, a full turnout. Um but yeah, let's talk a bit about boxing. Um, not a, a million miles away from that region of the world, Saudi seems to be the new power base for boxing. It's emerged over the last couple of years. We had two big press conferences here in London. I say here, I'm in Kent, but in London last week uh, on consecutive days. First for the Day of Reckoning, which is a super show on December the 23rd. And then back to Riyadh, February 17th for Fury against Usyk. What do you make of the Day of Reckoning show as a whole? It seems like one of the biggest shows we've seen, certainly this year, maybe even longer than that. I think it's an excellent show. Um, the mere fact that it is, it's like the teaser to um, for a potential fight between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. And I think it's amazing that they've got the two on this show. But people seem to forget, Deontay Wilder's actually been to the UK and boxed here. Do you remember that? Yeah, when he knocked out Ollie Harrison in one round, yeah. right? Um, yeah, so he's been here before, but it's nice to know that he's here, and that was on a Box Nation show, right? Uh, was that undercard of David Price versus Matt Skelton, I believe? Yeah, right. Like, yo, <laughs> I'm not really good to those fights, even though they're a decade ago, they, they're up to date fights. I'm not good on those ones, up to, <laughs> they're up to date fights. I'm talking about 30, 40 years, I'm really good at. So yeah, um, so I think it's a good. I think it's a good show. Um, um, I'm I'm looking forward to Daniel Dubois um, and Big Baby Miller. I hope that Don Charles, who's who's my bigger brother, that he can get make the right correct adjustments for Daniel Dubois to come out. That's not an easy fight for Daniel Dubois. No, you know what I mean? I mean seriously, you know what I mean. It's like they took Big Baby Miller's urine sample and they opened 10 Boots chemists. It's, he's, he's that full of drugs. So therefore, so therefore, seriously, he, he, stringent testing needs to be done for him for that fight. But, you know, Daniel, Daniel Dubois, this is, I think this that's a very good fight. Um, you know, Opadaya, Opajaya? Opataya. He's a bad man, right? <laughs> But you know what? I rate Zoro for taking this fight, you know? I do. I rate him for taking this fight. But Opajaya is, he's serious. I mean, I know, um, was it Michael Francis? His manager, pretty cool. Nice guy. Nice guy. Very, very nice guy. Um, that's, that guy, he's a wrecking machine. I'm, I'm going to be real. But, I mean, we've got to back our own. And plus, and... Zorro's South London as well, so come do what you do. You know what I mean? I, I wish you all the best. Good show. Um, Bivol, Bivol uh, versus Lyndon Arthur. I think it's cool for Lyndon Arthur to be to be getting that fight. You know what I mean? Because you're going to get financially rewarded as well. And crazier things have happened in boxing. Sure. Especially if Bivol's overlooking him, which I doubt, because he is a con. I, I spent a lot of time with him when we was out in Saudi. What a nice man. Oh, no, nah, seriously, what what a nice guy. Really, really nice guy. Um, and I think what they're trying to what they're trying to push it to, they're trying to push for Bivol and Baterviv. Yeah. So they're looking at yeah, so they're mostly looking at because Baterviv was out there as well in Saudi. I'm gonna be real. And um I saw I saw I saw Bivol out there and I saw Baterviv, and I was speaking to Baterviv for quite a lengthy time thinking that he was that UFC fighter. That's really bad, isn't it? That's terrible, isn't it? It's Seriously. <laughs> I, 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 know. I know. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> right? I Seriously. This. <laughs> I thought he was Khabib. Right, I was there talking to the guy and everything, like, yeah. <laughs> I kind of see it, but... 
No, but it's bad. I'm Muslim as well, so that's that's terrible. Because I'm have way around. I'll be, I'll be, like, oh, that's racist. So no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> seriously. Um, but I know that's what they're pushing for. And and props. You know what? You have to props what they've done, right? And I tell you, the person who doesn't really get a lot of the props in this whole thing is actually George Warren. Hmm. You know what I mean? George Warren, I'm telling you, has worked meticulously hard behind the scenes on this. So for him to go do that, or even like to, to be able to ring up other promoters and that, I know like he's a person, he's a go-to person. But the main person, all of it, is Spencer Brown from Gold Star Promotions. He's the guy that went out, orchestrated it, got the sit-downs with everyone. He's the person responsible for Tyson Fury uh, and Usyk. So, and I have to, I mean, I, I salute Spencer. I've got a lot of time for him. You know, he, uh, he and the Fury team accommodated me on another level when I went to Saudi Arabia. You know what I mean? So this is, it's all, it's me singing their, singing their praises all the time, just for the fact of how accommodating they were to me and how Turkey Al Sheikh and his people had, they looked after me with another level, another level, bro. And as we've alluded to there, at the very top of the card, you've got Joshua and Wilder in separate fights. Who out of the two, Joshua's got Valin and Wilder's got Joseph Parker. Who do you feel is taking the bigger risk there in terms of making it to that showdown? You know what? They're both, they're both equally at risk. Simply, even though Anthony Joshua's boxed while in twice in the amateurs and beat him, and they're both close fights as well, you know. Yeah. I've watched both of them, right? I would say equally, simply because I think Wilder's done a lot of sparring with Parker and their friends, right? Um, and with, with Joshua, I think Joshua, Anthony Joshua is the most psychoanalyzed sports person in British British sporting history i'm not even saying like everybody's got something to say psychoanalysts <laughs> as well Why yeah just everyday people yeah exactly um so if also they're both they're not easy fights they're not gimme fights especially the joseph parker that i saw box out in saudi arabia joseph parker looked the best i've ever seen him like how he was picking his shots then uh, um, how he how he he, he centralized himself in the ring um, to to control the movement of his opponent. I was really really impressed with Joseph Parker. Um, and when they uh, when it was spoken about that it was going to be Joseph Parker versus Daniel Dubois, you mean I I speak to Dubois camp. I said you don't need that fight now. I'm just going to be real. You don't need that fight now. You just come off a loss. You know what I mean? You don't need that, even though we can argue about the low blow or not. You just come off. You don't need that fight because the one thing about Joseph Parker, if Joseph Parker, Joseph, a consistent Joseph Parker is a, is a, is a problem, mm. right? And we're getting the consistency in Joseph Parker because, you know, like, he, you know I mean, of where he, in his homeland, he's a massive superstar, right? So he can do basically what he wants. You know what I mean? So, but him being disciplined and being like, right, I've just fought now and I'm going to be fighting again. You've got time to go to the pub. You ain't got time to, those things are done for you. So you're going to be properly on it. Um, so I would say that Anthony Joshua got the harder task, even though after all of that, I think, and the reason why is because more to the fact, they both got hard tasks. But more to the fact of Otto Wallen being a sneaky southpaw that doesn't punch too hard. And I know that you've been in with Usyk twice, so you should be adjusted to southpaws. But he's a different southpaw to, to Alexander Usyk. So I think Andy Josh has got the harder task, mainly because he's the one where we're going to be sitting down more to scrutinize. And we're looking for something really spectacular from him, right? We're looking something from from Deontay Wilder, but Deontay Wilder shouldn't be overlooking um, uh, Joseph Parker. But what I, what I really did like in that press conference, um, I know you guys filmed it. I know Seconds Out filmed the presser as well because I watched it afterwards. Um, that, <laughs> yeah, exactly. One extra view. <laughs> you know I mean? 
You're not sitting down on millions, mate. <laughs> but, but no, one thing I really, I really did like the maturity of of Deontay Wilder, how he spoke, how he delivered himself. Um, seemed like a man who was quietly confident in himself without, you know, I like the fact that he expressed love towards Andy Joshua saying, no, nothing but respect and love to you. And I wish you all the best and stuff. Like I haven't got time for that. You know? Um, and I think that's more to do with the growth and him working with Malik Scott and being taught stuff. So he's like quietly confident in the work that he can do. But we have to also bear in mind, he's been away from boxing nearly two years. Right, that must have something. Regard, you do all the sparring you want. You know what I mean? There's only a couple of guys that could do that. Sugar Ray Leonard being one of them, but not not everybody can do that. Floyd Mayweather, another one, right? But so it's not it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy for either man. But I think that Anthony Joshua got the harder task because there is more to be expected from Anthony Joshua, and especially now that he's linked up with Ben Davison, right? Yeah, I, I believe so. What do you make of that pairing? The fact that they're saying there's only six weeks to go, but obviously they've been working together for a little while before the fight was announced anyway. What do you make of them pairing up for this fight? Perhaps only for this fight. We're not sure at the moment. But what do I don't believe that. I don't believe they're only going to pair for this fight, right? I believe if Anthony Joshua puts in a decent performance against Otto Walling, he's going to leave... Um, he's going to leave... Yeah, Derek James, he's going to leave him, right? Um, sim- and this is what I'm trying to, like, <clears throat> I like Derek James a lot. We had Derek James on the, on on our show, me and Tundi, and I remember when Andy Joshua was out looking for a trainer, I said, did you feel a little bit aggrieved, Derek, that Andy Joshua went to everybody else in that area, yeah, and didn't come and check you? And he goes, yeah, what was that all about? Blah, 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 blah. And I noticed off of the back of that, they contacted him. I'm not saying it. Um, this is factual. I know the influence that myself and Baba Tundi have when people listen to the show because you're getting people who are inside the game speaking about the game and other people who are inside the game but don't have the knowledge that me and him have. They're going to listen and say, okay, yeah. But they went and linked up with Derek James. They got hold of Derek James and then Andy Joshua went to Derek James. But that was more to the fact that he was really riding high at that time. He really riding high at that time because Errol Spence was undefeated, right? Charlo was undefeated. Right. And then within that duration of time now, Anthony Joshua's gone there. And a lot of Americans are saying, like, Anthony Joshua went there and brought them bad luck because, <laughs> right, Errol Spence. He for everything. Yeah, of course he does. <laughs> right. It's mad, isn't it? I mean, I missed my train today. It's Anthony Joshua's fault. <laughs> right so I believe, like, for it to be suited, I think Anthony Joshua being based back in the UK, properly back in the UK and, and working with Ben Davison, then where Ben Davison has got quite a few fighters, but they're not as high profile. They're not high profile fighters. With Derek James, Derek James had Charlo, Errol Spence, they're very high profile fighters. In America, they're, they're high profile. No one don't really know Andy Joshua like that in America. Right? And 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 the Americans in they don't really rate Andy Joshua like that. They think, yeah, 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 right? Because of their last recollection, they're remembering um um uh, Andy Reese bowling you over. So I think for for Joshua, I think it's gonna be more suited for Joshua to be to be based here. Um, but psychologically, and I'm keeping this thing real. I don't think that Ben Davison can deal with Anthony Joshua psychologically. Technically, I believe that he can deal with him, right? Um, but psychologically, I don't believe that he can deal with Anthony Joshua. But it's all down to do with Anthony Joshua's mindset and how he wants to take things. But I'm saying psychologically, I think there's certain things that uh, I think Anthony Joshua would need around him. Um, but we shall see. But Ben, ben has, a little on that. What, what, what I don't, you it? know what? I don't, I don't want to get, I don't, seriously, I, I ain't going to get into that one because I, because I don't, I just know the things that are missing inside of Anthony Joshua. Right. And who am I to speak to anyone? What do you get? 18 more when he fought in Saudi? <laughs> right. It's very difficult to try and tell someone anything. You know what I mean? 
when they got like a quarter of a billion put down in their bank account. But right. I do know that we, I do know that me and Andy Joshua speak regularly. We speak, you know what I mean? And when we do speak about boxing, they listen, and I know they listen. So I just know there's certain things that I believe that that could be missing. Hopefully that Ben Davidson can fill that gap. But on the reels, I'm just being real here. You work with Tyson Fury, Ben Davison. You work with Tyson Fury. And at the time when you work with Tyson Fury, everyone's calling you a PE teacher. What do they call him? Box it, Ben or whatever. Boxer size Ben, yeah. Boxer size Ben, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But he just kept on grafting. What he has done um, with Lee Woods has been incredible. Yeah. Right? Um, but how it is now, it's like, Anti Joshua's a star, right? Certain times when it comes to trainers and everything else, they're looking for validation to who they are. You never, you work with Tyson Fury, you never really trained Tyson Fury, right? But you trained Tyson Fury because you was with him day in, day out when he was going through his mental health and everything else. So obviously you should be rewarded for that, right? But, um, Boxing is very simplistic. When people don't know boxing, they was it convolute it with hyper embroiled rhetoric to make it sound more technical in the way it is. Like but when you have, you make it. yeah, I'm not saying that. But I'm not saying about. But I'm no, saying no, like, we have this. But we have this in the industry. Right. Unfortunately, when it came to Anthony Joshua, because he was new to boxing, you can't look to say, you know, it doesn't matter what training you got, whatever training that Anthony Joshua got, he can't train. That's what you get. He can't, he's useless, he's rubbish, right? This is this is boxing. I've been in this game a long time. I'm not a baby. You know what I mean, next month I'm 50, right? <laughs> So I know you know the rules, black don't crack. Right. <laughs> Apparently right. so, yeah. Right, exactly, exactly. Right. So the things that Anthony Joshua needs, yeah, is a spiritual support system. Because boxing, like most things, is spiritual, right? And until you realize, yeah, the God within yourself, right? And the spirit within yourself, it doesn't matter how much money you got, you will never have that success. Because we equate having money to success, nothing. That's not true because we know loads of people got loads and loads of money. Um, you know I mean? But does that bring you your happiness? Especially when I know, like, you're fight. Why are you fighting? Because if you're just fight, if you're just fighting for money, even though, like, when he asks, he was saying, "I'm just fighting for money." You're not. You're not. You know what I mean you have that burning desire to be champion again. You have that burning desire for the adulation. As much as you say you don't want it, you do because that's human nature. There is nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? By what cost? So, you know what I mean? Les Brown had a famous quote that says, "Like, if there is no." enemy within the enemy outside can do you no harm right so whatever demons or whatever things that you need to go and conquer you need to go and conquer them but when you do that it's make sure that you eradicate the enemy within first so without going into too much detail about ben that spiritual support system you talk about do you believe anthony joshua's ever had that with any of his trainers no I'm going to be real with you. I mean, it's quite you know a mean? credit to him then that he's achieved all he has without that in place. No, he's got spirituality inside of him because he could not have done what he has done through the limited resources of where he started from without getting to where he's getting from. And this is not a Eurocentric way of thinking. This is a this is an African way of thinking. Right, he needs to align with that. I'm just gonna be real with you. He needs to align with that. Deontay Wilder aligned it. Uh, Deontay Wilder has aligned himself with that in in his cultural identity. 
Not saying that Anthony Joshua hasn't aligned himself with cultural identity, but there are certain things that are it's ingrained in you spiritually that you know certain things that we say like certain things could be like superstitious or blah, but it isn't. It's it's it is it's the paradigm of thinking that we we behave a certain way without even knowing why the reason why we do things until we have to deeply uh take away the layers and there could be a plethora of layers to take away once they've been taken away then we'll understand it and i believe like anti joshua could still become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world again i really do believe that um but you know as it says in scripture seek ye first the kingdom of god the king dome the king is who you are. The dome is in your head, your dome. The kingdom is you. Do you know what I mean? It says in scripture that, that God is inside each and the kingdom of God is inside each and every man. The kingdom is you, your mindset, your thinking. And once you go do that, then you could go right back up to the top again, I believe. But it's whether you want it or not. And the e-commerce where he looks, he says, oh, shout out, Spence. Well, you know, shout out. I see the comments. Uh, shout out. He's going on about all of this. What's he talking about? Yeah, but the real ones, no. Trust me, the real ones not. Who who out there, if there is anyone, would you like to see AJ with? Who do you think is a better fit in terms of the things you're talking about? Not gonna call no names. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm serious. I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm just gonna be rude. I'm gonna because it's not a better fit. If you want to just train for the sake of training and do what that there, cool. Do your thing, right? What do you really think that like, Tyson Fury hasn't got a spiritual a spiritual belief system behind him? Oh, of course he has, yeah. Yeah, you see when Tyson Fury turns around and says, My Lord, my Jesus Christ, bro, he, that's not just said for it's not said frivolously, you know. That is said with conviction. Why? Because he's aligned with his heritage. He knows I'm from a traveling community, right? You're not even meant to use the word this, it's not politically correct now to say gypsy, but he goes by to say, I'm king of the gypsies. Right? So that that is somebody who was aligned with his spiritual system. I was I was out there in Saudi Arabia when I was around certain of Tyson Fury's people. They have a right who are devout Christians. Right? Uh what's what's the what's his brother's name? Uh, was it Chris Andrews? Who runs he runs a he's he's got um a fleet showroom of okay. uh right. This guy, devout Christian. Then, man, when you're talking, you're having a conversation. And even though I'm Muslim, but we have a common denominator. Our common denominator is the higher being. And the higher being is God. Then, hold on. So let me ask you this then. So Tyson Fury has that spirituality in himself, as we're saying Anthony Joshua does too. His trainers over the years haven't necessarily aligned with that. So why does Anthony Joshua need that support system, whereas maybe Fury doesn't? No. Fury did need that support system. Right? Have you not seen... That before each fight of Tyson Fury's, everyone has to huddle and pray together. Have you not seen that? No. But then would you say Sugar Hill is obviously the current trainer? Would you say they're aligned spiritually, him and Tyson? Um, he don't need to be because he's getting because because Tyson Fury is getting that that support system or the spiritual support system from his from identifying with his cultural identity. So because he's because he's aligned himself with his cultural identity, then the spiritualism is there already. So then why does right? Josh and everybody all up and everybody and all up and everybody in his camp is aligned with that. So the trader doesn't necessarily have to be aligned with that. Right. You feel me? But then so Joshua we're supposed to turn around and say the trader as well, because he me? needs it more. Is that what you think? I would say, like to certain trainers, they need it more. But if you haven't got none of that around you, yeah, none of that around you, then it's going to be very, very difficult for it to come out. You got none of it around you, and then your trainer's definitely got nothing, nothing, right? I don't know. I don't know Ben Davidson's spiritual beliefs or, or or not. I don't know, right? I know him as a as a he's a cool guy, sure, right? But this game, this this game, it's not a game. But this sport is 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 deeper. It's deeper than that, and most things that we do are deeper than that. And it is once you get spiritually aligned then everything, I'm telling you, right now, Tyson Fury is rolling with spiritual alignment. You know who's really rolling with spiritual alignment? Usyk. Usyk, yeah. And Tyson Fury knows it as well. Hence why he'll get jarred. Right? But you can hear it. 
When he's turning around saying, oh, God's going to give me the victory. I hope God... And like Tyson Fury saying, no, God will never give you a victory over me. You wear earrings. You can't beat me. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm trying to... Do, like, to certain people are going to be able to think I'm talking crazy. But the real ones who know about this thing here, this is real. This is real. This is real. Great stuff. Spencer, we're pretty much running out of time. Not a big surprise. I know. We I could talk for 50 more minutes. I'm sure. So, so could I. I could listen for just as long. But no, really appreciate it. Best of luck with the fundraiser, as I said. Um, Thank you very watching, much, man. Have a look in the description. If there's still tickets left, you'll be able to pick them up and help the, the poor families that need the help out in Gaza. Um, yeah, really appreciate it, mate. And let's catch up again soon. Love, bro.